Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back from my vacation, and I'm going to show you some of my holiday snaps and videos. So this was for a NASA social event. NASA social is where you bring a lot of nerds together who uh, are active on social networks, and uh, they get to go to press conferences, get tours of things, and in my case, we got to see a real live rocket launch. Now the event was at Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is a working Air Force Base. Not only that, it is the working centre where they test out ballistic missiles and uh, missile interceptors, as well as launch rockets into polar orbits. So the security was actually very tight and it took us a while to get through that before we uh, got to get into the NASA area where they had the press conference set up, which was set to be streamed all around the world for people that were really interested in finding out about SMAP, the Soil Moisture Active Passive Satellite, which uh, had the mission of determining the amount of moisture in the soil all over the world, and therefore it's what it's really doing is measuring mud, technically. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details here because there is a very well-produced NASA briefing on the subject, including some bald Scotsman halfway through asking about the acceleration of the rocket. Now, uh, the main thing here is that because it's an Earth observation satellite, it has to be launched from Vandenberg because the Kennedy Space Center on the East Coast cannot launch north or south without the, de the debris, the spent stages, landing over civilized areas. Now, after that was over, we got to go on a tour of the rest of the base. Well, specifically, we got to go to The Rock, the Western Range Operations Control Center. And I can't show you any pictures of that. Uh, I can't show you any pictures from the outside or the inside. It was a very high security area. And they specifically said no photography of the interior, exterior. We had to leave everything behind. And uh, yeah, it is a mission control center with consoles full of people working all over the place. It was empty right now. There was a few people having drills, testing stuff. We got to see how the whole abort sequence worked. We got to see the area where they would control the space around it. They would have uh, a bunch of people working on marine air, uh, road closures, rails, all that stuff to make sure that the range was actually clear for launch. This was utterly fascinating, but unfortunately I couldn't show you anything. What I can show you is the patches that the guys were selling. These weren't official patches. These were things created internally by uh, the 30th Space Wing, I guess, to raise a little bit of cash for their little projects. I especially like their Eye of Sauron for the uh, reconnaissance satellite. Thankfully, the next site on the list was a little more public. This was the Vandenberg Space and Missile Heritage Museum, which of course has all sorts of exhibits and a curator who is just full of amazing stories. So let's uh, take a look at some of this stuff. So there were originally 60 of these that were deployed in England. None of them exist there now. So they are only basically con concrete ruins in several places, and I can tell you that there are a lot of folks in the UK that don't know that this history existed. And that's not a slight against anybody, it's just because it's one of those Cold War things that get lost in time, and that's a very dangerous thing for us, is when we don't pass stories on. So we're working on preserving this to tell that story, and then we're working on a documentary film to go and preserve the story and help them with that as well. So, and that's what these guys were all about in the early days, being a part of something bigger than them. And when you look across the way, you see those concrete, di oh, off in the distance, those concrete uh, blast walls. That's where they launched the first intelligence satellite for the United States. That's where they launched Corona Discover 1. So that happened out there, February 28, 1959. And then you, of course, follow around to uh, Slick 2 to the west uh, pad there. And you can see the bottom of the MST is open. You can see the gem uh, on the side of the booster for those that are uh, can reach out that far optically. So, that's, so that, that MST will roll back and expose the vehicle. When we go inside, you'll see pictures of that and all like that. So, this booster, uh, this half frame, this is a Thor uh, SM75. This is a 1959 Thor SM75. This particular airframe was on nuclear alert in England from 1959 to 1963. The students from the 392nd Missile Training Squadron, Trinity Air Force Base, went to, uh, to, to England as a joint program with the Royal Air Force and the United States Air Force. The Royal Air Force was in charge of the booster. The U.S. Air Force was in charge of the bomb. So it took both to agree. They would go through the count if they needed to, and away it would go. So obviously that didn't happen, thankfully. And after the system came out of service, they brought all that hardware back. Here's the thing. This shelter you're standing in was also on nuclear alert in England. 
Because the original shelter that was here was disassembled and went to Johnson Island to support another program down there. And they reconstructed this site with parts that came back from Alert in England. So the building, the booster, all the stuff was at one point on Nuclear Alert. This booster was then modified and went to Johnson Island as part of another program called Program 437. And 437 was an anti-satellite program that they did out in Johnson Island until about 1975. And then it came back out here. Okay, so this is kind of fun. The green paint, if you notice, you'll see this a lot of times in this industry. That's what we call seafoam green. We use seafoam green because psychological testing was performed and they've concluded that this paint was the most calming in high stress environments. See, it's good. Right? <laughs> Very serene, isn't it? Also known as institutional green. You'll see it in uh, nurses' offices in yep. elementary school and uh, psych wards. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Which makes all kinds of sense. <laughs> yeah. But the other thing about this is because you don't want to be too zen out doing this because, you know, we still have a mission to get done. So they had ashtrays built into the desk because they had to get nicotine up back in the day. So there's a cultural thing for you. That was actually an engineering requirement to build ashtrays into desks. Okay, you get the idea. I could spend hours and hours with Jay talking about all the fascinating things that he has. Uh, the, the museum is actually on base, so you kind of have to uh, you know, arrange well ahead of time to visit, you know, because you have to get your credentials and stuff sorted out. So yeah, while it's possible to get tours, you're not going to just turn up at Vandenberg Gate and ask for a tour of this. Or maybe you can. Maybe you have the credentials all uh, already figured out. And if you do, great, because it means you can go and see all this stuff. Anyway, eventually the tour came to an end and uh, we went to stop by the, the launch site to take a quick look, get some nice photos. This was uh, Space Launch Complex 2, Slick 2. And then some people stayed extra late to actually see the tower roll back and expose the rocket. But next day the launch was scheduled. We had to get there at 5.15am. The reason is that the orbit required it to cross the equator at 6am local time every day, which meant they have a very small launch window at exactly the crack of dawn. I'm told we're down to 10% probability of violation. I mean, 90% no. I like that number. What they're worried about are high altitude winds. So that's just rumor. You didn't hear anything official. Uh, but uh, Go Firebird. Firebird, best acronym of the mission. Firebird. That is the best acronym ever. There were a lot of people out considering the hour of the day. I, I found it interesting. There was a couple of rituals. There was a lot of eating of peanuts, which is considered to be good luck with space launches. There's a whole story behind that. There was the, the base chaplain was handing out prayer cards for people that wanted to, you know, put their uh, energy, religious energy into making the launch happen. But while the weather was great on the ground, higher up, things were not the way we wanted them. Try to check to proceed with terminal count. Report go on break. Big break. I'll see this is LP on countdown one. Go ahead, Elsie. Copy. Yes, sir. Uh, we uh, remain red uh, for upper level wind. And uh, uh -oh. we'll do not have uh, another opportunity for those that are green. But we are scrub uh, for today's uh -oh. upgrade. So no launch for me, but a couple of days later it was rescheduled at the same time. So we all got up there at about 5am and it was misty, it was like a scene from the X-Files. I am so excited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, what time is it? It's like 5.30? Yeah, we've got about... Yeah, 5.30 on the dot. We've got about 15 minutes to launch. Oh my god. Are you excited? How far are you come from? Seattle. Seattle. Santa Cruz. Okay. I'm local. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm from San Francisco. <laughs> Put that up in the accent. Yeah. <laughs> we do actually have a genuine Scotsman here that lives in Scotland. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very impressed. We have my family there. Came quite away. Yeah. And so we okay, have... good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? <laughs> okay, how many folks were out here uh, Thursday morning? <laughs> Wow, diehards. How many came out yesterday morning? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, and then you're all back here this morning. Good job. 
Um, right now we're playing the audio. Oh, we need some clouds to go away, don't we? Oh man! Right now we're playing the audio from the uh, um, from the Air Force from the Western Range Operational Control Center, and um, we'll we'll continue with that. For those folks with the NASA social, well done, hanging out. How many are how many of are left? Man, you guys are diehards. That's cool. Well, thanks thanks to everybody for being here. Bring the marine layer stratus deck to around 300 feet with visibility dropping a little more to four six miles uh, with uh, temperatures dropping off a little bit to the upper 40s uh, with winds shifting more to a northwesterly direction still at 8 to 12 knots with an overall probability of violation of 0% with no areas of concern. And this concludes my brief. <laughs> Never has so much attention been paid to a weather forecast. <laughs> the giant crowd. Yay! Giant. <laughs> Space <laughs> fans! The largest group of morning. Five, <laughs> <laughs> six a.m. Cam one, go. Cam two, go. VE, go. ATC two, go. VSE. Go, Colorado South, go, FACA, go, GE, go, RC, clear to the seat, as a PM, go, USO, go, AC, go, launch director. LC, this is LD, you have permission to launch. Roger. Our personnel switch to channel 15 after lift birth is confirmed for pad security. <laughs> go Delta, go SNAP. Yes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 20? Yes. Oh my god. T minus 15 seconds. Yes. Yeah. Green board. Really 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, six 5, five <laughs> 4, Whoa. 3, Whoa. You might get lucky. Keep on. The chamber pressure on both front of your engines. Oh, oh there's a the sign. The chamber pressure on all three solids. Twenty-seven seconds of the report. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and there she goes. Oh, oh that's gone. Yeah, One seventy-nine. Oh, 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 there. There. <laughs> just that, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. And so there you go. That was a kind of that was my personal experience of the whole thing. Uh, it's really hard to recreate the kind of you know energy you feel, the goosebumps of being at one of these events live. It's, you know, it's like a sports event. Everyone's there rooting for it, regardless of what happens, what you see in the end. It really was a great trip, and uh, I you know encourage people to get to these launches if they're if it's possible. My terrible video and the official video do not do it justice. Anyway, but one last thing remained, and that was to ask the kids what they felt about their first rocket launch. Okay, Sky, so first rocket launch, Vandenberg. What time did you get up? 3.15. Something like that. Something like that. Was it worth it? Oh, but, but they... it was worth it because we got good seats. Oh yeah, but uh, did you like the Not launch? Not next to the porta potty. <laughs> but was the rocket launch impressive? Would you like to see another one? Yeah. Yeah, you would like to see that. How long did it last? Did you cheer? Uh, no. Is there anything you've seen that is anything like that in real life outside of uh, rockets? <laughs> outside of rockets. I think I saw something, but I don't know. You don't know. Well, okay. But Could you describe it in words? The rocket one? Yes. Uh, well, kind of scary because I thought it was going to be like a big boom. Like, you know, like, because they said you were going to feel the, 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 the stuff uh -huh. thing. Um, and I thought it was going to be big, but it wasn't. And I was telling myself, this is Scary. It's not gonna be scary, and it wasn't scary. <laughs> but I was so scared, so I was like, 
<laughs> okay. But it wasn't scary. It was so, cool. As you've said. Okay, well that's great. Thank you. And with the event over, it was a four and a half hour drive home, but I vowed to return and do it better next time. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank <music> you.